Hi, I'm Aiman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace from your car the wheel stud, which is this bolt that holds both this disc and your tire. Alright, so right now, we're dealing with a 2010 Honda Insight Hybrid, and I think this trick should work for pretty much most Hondas, if not all cars. So, if you have any other car, this trick probably should work. All right, so some of that some cars do have five studs. This one has four, but that really isn't any matter. And the reason that you might want to remove this is because, and probably the reason that you're watching this video is because these threads are cross-threaded. Let me demonstrate here. And like, it just doesn't lock on correctly. Or in our case, the wheel actually came off and the entire thing is damaged, as you'll see here. It's also, it's like really, um, What's it called? Strip. The operation is pretty simple. All you have to do is take out everything surrounding the wheel stud. That includes the caliper, the brake bracket, and the rotor. We have videos on how to take out all of these, so go check them out if you don't know. The next step is to free the gear. And when we do that, then we're going to turn the... I think it's already turned. Well, we're going to turn one of the wheel studs to the pole right behind it. The reason that we're doing that is because if we, the thing that we're going to do next is we're going to knock out the stud. And if we knock it out while it's not at that position, you'll see that, for, for example, using this stud, if we knock it out, I'm not going to do it, but if we knock it out, it's going to rub up against the inside of this uh, knuckle. And if it rubs up against it, then it can't turn. And in order to get it back, it's very tricky. You have to use the, you have to wedge this tool behind it and then hit it. And you don't want to go through all that trouble. So, the solution, once we're at this part, is just to cut it. And since you already have a cross thread, you're probably going to cut it anyway. Now, if you didn't catch the reason why we're turning it to this position, the reason why is that once we knock this bolt... Oh. Let me... That was a bad idea. Once we knock this bolt, we're going to be able to... We're going to actually be able to knock it back in if we need to. Alright, so now that I've knocked the bolt back in place, let me demonstrate what I mean by spinning the wheel. Or the knuckle. See? Pretty cool. Alright, so now we get to the cutting part. Here, we have an angle grinder, and when you're cutting, you always gotta be sh make sure that you're safe. So, get some safety glasses out, or goggles. And, it's kind of cold right now, so make sure you get bundled up. So we have the angle grinder. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut up to right up to this knuckle, but not, not right up to this part, but not directly on it so that we don't damage it. So in order to not damage it, we're going to put a washer on it. Oh yeah, I should also mention in the past, we've actually done a video on this. I think we used it to cut a pole in the backyard. So go check that out if you want to. But for now, there we go. Where'd it go? Uh, I was gonna say clean off, but maybe somewhat clean off. The next step is not to knock it out. And if you can't knock it out when it gets to this point, you take any extension or a metal rod, put it up to it, and keep hitting. And there we go. Where's the other side? All right, so talking about putting this little stud back in, all you have to do is take the new stud, which we already have in here, right? The old stud, but Take a new stud that you have and just position it behind the hole. Now, if you have a piece blocking it, you might have to cut it in order for it to fit. And by the way, we're not advising you to cut your car. You should always check out other options before you do that. But 
just like last resort, you'd have to cut off this part. After that, you just want to put the stud in, and then this is really, really hard to angle. I shouldn't have taken it out. Oh. And then what you want to do now is you'll notice that there's actually no threading on where the, uh, the the bolt used to be. So in order for it to go in, we're going to redo that clip actually. We're going to assume that this bolt right here is the new bolt that we're going to install. If you can't get the bolt in, place the bolt in the freezer for a few hours since metal expands, therefore in the heat, therefore it should shrink in the cold. So place it in the freezer for a few hours, come back and then put it in. Then you want to knock it in using an extension. And then you realize that when you try to knock it in, this is a bit of an awkward angle, but we've already knocked it in as much as we can get it in. But once we knock it in, you notice that it's not going to be flush. What we want as a goal is for it to be flush like this. Exactly like this. So in order to get it flush like that, we're going to have to use a special kind of fulcrum using a few washers. Whoa, that was loud. And then a nut. Make sure that this nut can engage with the thread. And the reason that we have these uh, other nuts and this washer here is so that we don't damage the threads in between. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten it. And because once this bolt gets to this point, once this nut gets to this point, it's not gonna be able to go any further. So that means that the bolt is gonna be pushed towards you. The reason that we want this to happen is so that the the bolt doesn't fall out. All right. All right. So you saw that it didn't spin, and the reason why is because we didn't knock it in further enough. And the reason why is because it actually engages with the thread with not a thread, but sort of like. Well, it just engages here because there's something that causes friction with this, uh, with these ridges on the stud. So we have to knock it in further. And then we should be able to do it. All right, take a look at the flushness of it. Alright, so I had a hard time knocking the uh, the bolt in, so I asked my dad for some help. Maybe it's because I'm a, just a bit, just weak enough to, uh, not not strong enough to uh, push this bolt in. But once we have that in... Oh, you can already see that the bolt is flush, just as it is right here. Alright, yep. So now, I'm just take this off. Alright, so that's the end of the video. So I'm Ayman and today I showed you how to remove and replace a cross threaded or damaged wheel stud of your car. And in the next video, we're actually going to show you how to replace this entire thing. What we have here is the wheel stud. I mean, the, no, the wheel knuckle. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. But in the next video, I'm going to show you how to replace, remove and replace the wheel knuckle. So keep an eye out for that. and. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Ayman, thanks for watching. Please like, I comment, subscribe, and look at all the other videos on I and Ayman. Especially, keep a lookout for the ones where it's during the winter and it's very cold because those are always a treat to do. So, I'll see you there. And for now, I'm Mechanic Ayman and signing out. Peace.